chapter 2.4 sculpture. This is video one. We're going to look at a, a number of different types of sculptures, some traditional uh, in the round. This is a relief. This is a more modern assemblage or fabricated piece installation or earthworks and then um, just some various other sculptures that are carved or sculpted or modeled. So sculptures can be made from a lot of different materials, especially in the 21st century, also the late 20th century, I would say as well, glass, wax, ice, plastic, so on. Um, and also that sculptures exist in three dimensions, and I've, I've mentioned this a few times, three dimensions literally are height, width, and depth. When you have a two-dimensional work, such as a drawing or a painting or a photo print, that is a two-dimensional work, and that only has height and width. So just keep that in mind. That's what it really refers to. So um, sculptures are things that we can sort of walk around or be immersed in their presence, and we'll get into the installation at the end of this. So there's three <coughs> dimensions in sculpture, and they can be freestanding or also called in the round. Uh, relief we're going to look at, and then um, sometimes the image in the relief is sticking out more or it is kind of sunken. So we'll look at different types. We're going to start with freestanding sculpture. So this is, this is inviting us to get on all sides of it. Now it doesn't always mean you can get all the way around the piece, such as this. This is a sculpture from Egypt, ancient Egypt. This is 2,000 years old, if you look down here. Sculpture of the Lady Senui. And this is from 1971 BC. And it's made out of granite. Look at our first number, 76 inches high, right? It's almost 6 feet. And then 45 inches wide by 18 inches deep. Now these two numbers, from the view we're looking at, are reversed. This would be the 18 inches, and that would be the, the 45. Okay, so it's sculpted out of granite. When we look at Egyptian sculpture, um, most often it is carved out of stone, just as we're seeing, but it's meant to be preserved for eternity. These are tomb sculptures, or sometimes these are outside of um, a royal tomb or residence or temple, and her back would be the wall, so when we're talking about in the round and walking around the whole thing, sometimes that's theoretical due to the placement of the sculpture, but the back is sculpted and there is something on the back. It's just that it is placed up against a wall. Sometimes we're looking at um, live rock, which is something carved out of a giant piece of rock in Egypt and other places too, but um, that then you really cannot consider it a uh, in the round piece. But anyway, we have this piece out of, out of granite, solidly built. She's kind of in a boring style and there's no open spaces um, so that this would really help with cracking. You can see there is a little bit of cracking through the 4,000 years this has existed, but the arm is still intact and it likely would have fallen off if this had been open. You get a sense of the granite for sure and it's an interesting piece, a little bit uh, upright and uh, kind of straight. The next work we're going to look at is Gian Bologna's Rape of the Sabine Women, but this is just as Rape of a Sabine, it's shortened, but this is an um, early origin story for the city of Rome. Men from Rome went and uh, stole wives from another area so they could uh, expand their power. This was done in the Renaissance, and it was made out of gesso, which is sort of a mineral that's been compacted and constructed to be carved out of. Um, it's a soft, very soft material, so you can kind of see some of this porosity in this kind of, um, it's not decay exactly, but it, it's definitely not as smooth as marble or hard as granite. Those two things are much stronger. And this is very tall, and we get more of a dynamic sense. You notice all these open, negative uh, spaces around the bodies, a lot of bending and twisting, and has multiple planes that we're looking at. So we're looking at this 
leg on this plane and the body on this plane and then she's turned and we see the frontal area of her and so on. So it has multiple planes, multiple dimensions, multiple viewpoints. You can really get around this piece. So it's political propaganda and um, talks about the foundation of Rome and the man that commissioned it is from Florence and he's trying to liken his rise to power to that of Rome. So that's why he asked for the statue. So bas relief and high relief, these are our terms from French, this is a French term, ba, and it means low. So the sculptor's marks are very shallow, um, and the rule of thumb, and you'll we'll, we'll look at this in a moment. Um, the rule of thumb is that it is less than half of the physical structure coming out from the wall or plane. So if you notice, there's not really a shadow coming around that leg. Um, it's just kind of an outline almost with a, a little bit of carving. Uh, the eye is almost coming out. And that's about the only thing in this piece that we see a little bit of musculature and half of the arrow. But it should be like from a half to three quarter projecting out for it to become high relief. So this is a bas relief. This is an Assyrian piece. And these are frequently on um, palace walls or temple walls different sort of places to show uh, symbols of power, which this is, killing a lion uh, for an emperor or a ruler. Um, and it would be shown to show strength. As you're walking up to the building, you would see these different bas-reliefs. This is a high-relief piece from Susan Durant, a uh, memorial to King Leopold of the Belgians. And you can see the difference where like this tail is really projecting out, very different from the last piece that we looked at. The entire head is sculpted and free from the wall. So this was a giant uh, stone, a marble, that was carved out to high relief. I mean, this almost goes beyond high relief. It's, it's very deep, deeply carved. Um, <clears throat> if you look here, the wings, by comparison, that is in bas relief. Those are not projecting out.